Proforma invoices are essential for communicating with customers, preventing misunderstandings and securing payments. If you are looking to make proforma invoices in Excel to manage your clients and save time, then you've come to the right place. Hi there, welcome to Excel Demi, where you can learn to use Excel and solve Excel VBA related problems. I'm Ishraq Kader and in today's video, I'll be discussing a step-by-step -step guide on how to create proforma invoice in Excel. So, let's get started. For this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365. Before we begin, let's quickly go through what is a proforma invoice. A proforma invoice represents an initial bill for requesting payment from the customer before the items are supplied. In general, a proforma invoice contains shipping details, an illustration of the products, the total payable amounts, and other necessary information regarding the transaction. I'll begin by formatting the shipping section of the proforma invoice. But first, let me expand the ribbon. To do this, I'll right-click on any of the tabs in the ribbon, then uncheck Collapse the Ribbon option. Now our ribbon is visible. I'll go to the Insert tab, then I'll click on the Illustrations drop-down. I'll choose Shapes. This shows a list of all the shapes, but first, let me resize this window. This seems about OK. Now, if we scroll down, we can see lots of shapes which we can choose. In my case, I'll go to the Stars and Banners section and choose Horizontal Scroll. Click on it, then hold the left mouse button and draw the shape. After that, I'll right click on the shape and choose Edit Text. I'll hold down the Shift key and type Proforma Invoice. After that, I'll choose the text, go back to the Home tab, then I'll increase the font size to 16. I'll also change the alignment to center and middle align. I'll make the text bold. We can drag the shape in position. We can resize the shape. And that's it. Our proforma invoice title is ready. Next, I'll select from B5 to D5 range. In the alignment section, I'll click on merge and center to merge all the cells. After that, I'll click on the formula bar. I'll hold down the shift key and type SHIPPER DETAILS in all caps. Press ENTER. Select the SHIPPER DETAILS text. In the font section, click on FILL COLOR drop-down. Here you can choose any color according to your liking. I'll choose dark blue. Again in the font section, click on font color drop-down and choose a suitable color. I'll choose white background 1. After that, I'll increase the font size to 12 and make the text bold. You can also press Ctrl B to make your text bold. Now, select from C6 to D6 cell, click on Merge and Center, then apply the Fill Handle tool all the way up to row 11. After that, select from B5 to D11 range. In the font section, click on Borders drop-down and select outside borders. Afterward, I'll add shipper details field starting from the B6 cell. I'll type name, then insert a colon. In a similar way, I'll type the other fields. Address, telephone, cell, email, and lastly, GSTIN. I'll select all the fields and press Ctrl B to make them bold. Now, I'll select from B5 to D11 range, press Ctrl C to copy, I'll go to the E5 cell and press Ctrl V to paste. Similarly, I'll also paste in the H5 cell. Afterward, I'll select the E5 cell, I'll replace Shipper with Consumer, press Enter. And lastly, I'll replace Shipper with Shipping, press Enter. I have changed the shipping detail fields 
and added some placeholder texts. Lastly, I'll click on the Insert tab, then I'll click on Illustrations drop-down, I'll select Pictures, and choose this device. This will open up the file explorer. Here I'll choose the downloads folder, then I'll select the picture. Click on insert. This will insert our company's logo. You can drag the logo in position. You can also resize it. And that's it. We've added all our shipping information. In step 2, I'll format the product details section. Here, I have already inserted the column headers in the B13 to J13 range and applied the same formatting as shown before. Now, I'll go to the J14 cell, press equal, type the round function. For the number argument, I'll select H14, then insert multiplication operator, which is the asterisk symbol, then I'll choose I14 cell reference. Insert a comma. For the number digits argument, I'll enter 0. Then close the parenthesis. Here we are multiplying the quantity and rate values in the H14 and I14 cells to get the price. Then we are asking the round function to return the price to 0 decimal places or to the nearest dollar. I'll press enter. Then I'll apply the fill handle tool to copy the formula all the way up to J18 cell. I'll select from I14 to J18 in the number section. I'll click on this drop down and choose accounting. Now our rate and amount values are formatted properly. Following this, I'll select from B14 to J14 range. Click the home tab. In the style section, I'll click on cell styles drop down. Here you can choose various color and cell styles. In my case, I'll choose 20% accent 1. We can apply this cell style to every other row for better readability. To do this, I'll double click on the paint brush icon, which is Format Painter. Next, I'll select from B16 to J16 and drop the Format Painter. Similarly, I'll select from B18 to J18 and drop the Format Painter to apply the same formatting. If I press Escape, we can exit the Format Painter. Lastly, I'll apply the outside borders. So I'll select each of the fields. In the Font section, I'll click on Borders drop-down and choose Outside Border. In a similar way, I'll apply the outside border to rest of my table. Finally, the formatting of our product details section is complete. In step 3, I'll estimate the final bill. But first, we'll have to collapse the ribbon in order to make room. So I'll right click on any of the tabs in the ribbon and choose collapse the ribbon option. Now we can see the entire window. As you can see that I have already added subtotal amount, free charges, state goods and services tax, which for this case I've considered 10%, central goods and services tax, which I've also considered at 10%. In addition, we have the insurance, legal fees, and some other fees. Lastly, I'll calculate the total amount of all the fees. But first, I'll have to calculate the subtotal amount. I'll go to the J20 cell, press equal, type the sum function, for the number 1 argument, I'll select from J14 to J18 range, which contains all the prices. Close the parenthesis and press Enter. Afterward, I'll go to the J22 cell, press Equal, then I'll type the round function. For the number argument, I'll select J20 cell, which contains the subtotal amount. I'll press F4 once to lock in both the row and column references. Then I'll insert the multiplication operator, which is the asterisk symbol, and type 10%. Insert a comma for the number of digits argument. I'll insert 0 to round off the answer to the nearest 
integer. Close the parentheses and press enter. Then apply the fill handle tool to copy the formula into the J23 cell. Press equal. Type the sum function. For the number 1 argument, I'll choose from J20 all the way to J27 cell. This includes all the charges. Close the parentheses and press enter. Now I'll add the shippers and consumers signature section. I'll go to the C31 cell. In the formula bar, I'll type shippers signature. Press enter. Then I'll select the C31 cell again, click the Home tab. In the Font section, I'll click on Borders drop-down. Here, I'll choose Top Border. After that, I'll select the H and I31 ranges, click the Home tab. In the Alignment section, I'll click on Marge and Center. Then I'll add Top Border. After that, in the Formula bar, I'll type Consumers Signature. Press enter. Lastly, I'll add the disclaimer. To do this, I'll click on the insert tab. Then I'll go to illustrations drop down and choose shapes. I'll select rectangular shape. Then I'll draw the shape just below the product details. We can see a shape format tab appear. I'll go to the shape format tab. Here in the shape style section, I'll click on Shape Fill drop-down and choose No Fill. Again, I'll click on Shape Outline drop-down and choose No Outline. Afterward, I'll right-click on the shape. Then I'll choose the Edit Text option. Here, I'll paste my disclaimer. Since the default font color is white, so the disclaimer text is now invisible. Press Ctrl plus A to select all the text. Then click on the Home tab. In the Font section, Click on Font Color drop-down and select a suitable font color. Here I'll choose Black. After that, I'll reduce the font size to 8. Make any necessary adjustments to the rectangular shape and that's it. Our Proforma invoice is now ready. Let's enter some dummy data into the invoice. If we go to the sample invoice worksheet, we can find a complete pro forma invoice where a sample shipping information and product details have been added. Here, the prices will be calculated based on the quantity and rate values. All the prices are then added together to calculate the subtotal amount, which is 941 US dollars. Afterward, we have to enter the free charges, insurance fees, and other fees while the taxes will be calculated based on the subtotal amount. Lastly, the subtotal amount and all other charges are added to calculate the total amount, which is 1329 US dollars. In this demonstration, I have shown you a detailed guide to making a pro forma invoice in Excel. Hopefully, you can apply this knowledge to construct your own pro forma invoice according to your requirement and convenience. Don't forget to download the practice workbook from the video description. Try it out for yourself. It's a great way to improve your Excel skills. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up. If you have any any queries, suggestions or feedback, leave a comment down below. For more information, you can also visit exceldemy.com. Also, to see more helpful content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hope to see you next time. Bye!